Hi, and welcome to um, Pandemic Lockdown. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're all in the same boat together across the world where we're all uh, locking down and uh, confined to our houses. Uh, so I thought I'd do a few little videos uh, based on fixing things around my house while I have the chance. The first one, and this one, is um, to do with a paper shredder that we've had for about eight years and was working fine until a few weeks ago and then started to make this noise. Yeah, not good. Certainly doesn't sound right. Uh, so I thought I'd have a go at fixing it. Now I'm not saying I will be able to fix it because you know from my previous attempts at stuff like this, I'm fairly incompetent, but uh, I have some background in uh, some engineering things. So I'm fairly sure that at least I'll be able to identify the problem, uh, if not entirely fix it. Uh, so if you are uh, got a bit of time, and let's face it, who hasn't uh, these days, uh, why not uh, come over and see me at the bench try and solve this problem? Okay, so as I said in the description, in the introduction, what we have here is a rather poorly um, fellows sh cross-cut shredder. Now, what I didn't say in the introduction was, along with that noise, that horrible grinding, slow grinding noise that it was making, it was also making a rather terrible burning smell. So, in all honesty, at this stage, I'm not it's not looking hopeful for saving this, but I'm going to try anyway, because um, obviously I'm incompetent in technical stuff. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge. So let me show you the actual base of the shredder. Try and get it in shot. It's rather large, so some of it will, out, will be out of shot. There's the bottom edge. And if I put it all the other way, there's the top edge. So I'll try and get it in the middle as much as possible. Now, having a quick look round the perimeter of the device, I think it's this, this end, oh god, this is going to be well out of focus, but this bit here, right the way around here, is the bit that this is attached to by the screws that go down. So I'm thinking that these, this will come apart, once I take these screws out, this will just lift up away from the base. At the moment, that's the best guess I have. So the question is now, obviously, I, there are screws here and here and here. There's also possibly some screws. No, there isn't a screw down. Is there a screw down there? Yeah, there's a screw in there. And there's also the equivalent screw down here. I may need to take that out as well. Um, I don't think I need to take this Perspex barrier off, but we'll see. And also, I need to work out if I've got a screwdriver, which will go that far down and be less than the circumference of that. Anyway, so let's try. I have a variety of screwdrivers down here. Can, this one will fit in terms of... Um, yeah, that will fit, but unfortunately that is a flat screwdriver, and I think, having a look down there, that looks very much Phillipsy. But we'll try anyway. I think it's Phillips. Let me just have another little look. Actually, it seems to be both. It's got a flat on it as well. So let's just see if I can... Right. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, uh, Phillips is definitely the thing, I think, because it's a very small screw head. That's the problem. Have I got anything that small? Uh, hmm. Bear with me, one has to do some research. Okay, so I've done some rooting around and I can't find any screwdriver. This is the nearest screwdriver that I've got that will fit in. 
But the problem is it's flat, as I said before. And also the second issue is that the Phillips screwdriver, the screw that's in there is so very small that I can't, it does appear to have a flat on it as well. It seems to be one of those dual screws where you could use a Phillips or a flat. Um, but I don't, I just simply don't have anything that's small enough. This is a screwdriver that I made when I was at school. Um, and when I say I made it, I did, you know, I made the whole shaft and the Perspex handle. And I, I've um, filed the edges off to try and get into that um, screw, but it's very hard when you can't really see. You're just looking for a slot. Now that looks like it's in. But I can't really, can't really put any pressure on it. It just seems to, th yeah, it just seems to, th to bounce off and it seems to be on with such force. as like, there'll be to put some sort of torque, torque driver on it and I just can't get it out. So I might have to, I might have to try a different tack and I'm suspecting that the reason why it's so problematic and so grinding and, and overheating and smelling and burning is because, I don't know whether you can see that. Let me see if I can get this on the, on here. But down here, there's a huge amount of impacted, mushed up pota um, potato, no, paper even. And the same over here, down just by the rollers and by the, the blade. And I'm, I'm just wondering if I could moisten that up and get it off, whether that will actually make things better. So I'm gonna try that tack first. And to do that, I've just got some, I've got some basic clipper oil um, to try and see if I can moisten the paper a bit. I just want to get it um, to the stage where, let's try and do it here. I just want to get to the stage where I can, um, I can make it malleable enough so I can actually try and hack away at the paper and try and free it up. I mean, that if that doesn't really work, I'm, I'm kind of at loss for what would, to, if I can't get into the um, into the device, it's very hard for me to get a f troubleshoot. Actually, there's there's little bits of impacted paper all over the place. The problem is, of course, that it makes it very um, very clear in the instructions that you, you. I think this is five or five pieces of sheets of paper at the same time. But even, you know, everybody, everybody tries to just speed things up by putting an extra couple of pieces of paper in and I do it all the time. I just, I start off with good intentions, but by the end of it, if I've got a lot of things to shred, oh, well, it's just fine. But if I put six in and then oh, I might be able to put seven in and, and then it goes and jams up and overheats. And luckily it's got a thermal cutout on, but, um, but it's not good. I don't, I'm not proud of myself. So the thing with this is the, the micro switch, which is a, an auto cut off, is meant that you can't get access to this while it's running around in the machine. You put this on upside down, you put it on the, the base that collects the paper, and this, this is the, the, the cut off, the micro switch. Um, so I can try it out, see if that makes any, difference okay so one moment i'll get back i'll plug it in and i'll see if i can get this uh running okay Okay, in reverse, that works. Let's just see if I can shred this. It, it 
it shreds, it shredded this quite well. I wonder if that's the problem. It still makes a noise, it, and that noise is not the way it used to make a noise. Obviously, the the red LED is the is the uh, thermal cutout. So let me just try this again. It's not smelling as bad as it did. It's still not perfect. This this is the uh, the security cutout as well, so it, it won't let you switch it into any mode if this is not depressed and pushed into the right um, position. So let's have another look, see if there's anything else I can do without taking the bottom off. Right. Um, no, now, now we are getting an increasingly bad smell of burning. I've just got a sneaking suspicion that this motor is, about, is burnt out actually, and that nothing I can do can save it. Of course, any sensible person would have had a look at the manual to see if it needs any lubrication under normal operation. But I'm not a sensible person, so that was, uh, that was never going to happen really. Actually, I, I, to be honest, I, I don't, I don't think that the manual. I found the manual online a, f, a good few months ago when I did an initial look. Right. Okay. Let's see if this will do anything. So I'm going to just turn it up, and I'm going to put it into reverse. Put the security switch on. Put the reverse, and then obviously don't try this at home, children. Now I'm just going to try the, the micro switch. Ah, right. The thermal cutout's gone on. I could hear that. It's gone out on the other side. Oh, no, it hasn't. Okay, that's interesting. That li there was a little tick. Little kick. and that normally indicates that the thermal cutout's gone on, but it hadn't. So let's try it again. Let's try hold the hold that down. Ah, you see, yes. There you go. The thermal cutout has come on, and it will it will not let you do anything until that is cooled down. So if I switch it off. I mean, you know, it is quite it is quite a well designed unit, um, and I suppose because of these these horrific blades in there, well, it have to be. But there's there's the micro switch that's on the back, which is the defeat. Then there's also a micro switch down here. So when a piece of paper comes in, that that actually starts the mechanism. And then there's obviously the, also the security thing here. Okay, so everything seems to have um, cooled down now. So let's let's try it again. So we'll power it up. Got a piece of paper here. Let's try another. So I folded it over, so it's the equivalent of I don't know four pieces of paper. No. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely shredding. It's definitely shredding. It's still sounding like something that's particularly oh it smells as well. Yeah, it's it's not going well this, I think it's fair to say. I do definitely need, I'm going to put that into reverse, I'm going to pop that upside down, I'm going to try the, uh, the micro switch again and see if I can defeat that and just get them running. 
Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to switch this. Um, I've just seen something. I'm going to switch this light off now that I'm lighting up the bench with, just to see if you can see the same thing that I can see. When I look in here, this area here. All right. I can see sparks. Okay, I can see sparks. So I'm just going to switch the light off in here so I can get a better show uh, with my, my my smartphone to see <laughs> to show you um, all of the horribleness that I'm seeing here. So let me just start the video. So we're looking into here, we're looking into this little bit, and I'm going to start off by defeating the micro switch. And I just want you to watch in there. Yes, did you see that? Let's try that again. So that's the cause. <laughs> that's uh, that's very much why it's overheating constantly. It is uh, it's practically on fire. Put the main light on. I really need to get this top off. Oh Jesus. Oh my goodness, that smells. Whoa, that smells. Let's just switch all that off because oh, that's uh, that's bad. Now, it is fair to say that I genuinely don't know if this has been happening all the time and I've never been able to see it. I have my doubts on that. Yeah, oh, that's red hot. Yeah, that is red hot. That's where the um, thermal cutout is happening because that's um that's sparking no oh dear this is not good okay so we're back at the workbench and uh i've purchased new screwdrivers which are long lovely so hopefully that'll get the work done what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a bit of this uh, clipper oil down in the various holes just to ease it off in case that's part of the problem Let's do that. I'm going to try, although it's a, it's got a Phillips, it's got one of those heads that is Phillips or flat. Um, so I'm going to try and do the flat ones and see if this works. But I'm just going to twist it and see if... No, okay. Let's just see if... Yeah, that's in. Let's just see if I can get this. Okay, so this one is, it's probably off screen. Oh, no, it's just on screen. Um, this one has come out. Excellent. And what is this one? Okay, in here. Let me just... Oh, right. Oh, I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. Uh, it's all done. All of the screws are out. And, yeah, sorry I couldn't get all that on camera because, Craig, it was just it was just so hard to get those screws out. Um, so the screws I have taken out are, there's a screw there, there was a screw there, there was one, two, and three there. Sorry, one, two, three there. Then there was one, two, three three there um, and I did it with a combination of that screwdriver and that screwdriver and that screwdriver and the last two the really hard ones actually the one that I made the screwdriver that I made that I showed you earlier that one 
Ironically, even though it was a, um, even though it was a, they were all Phillips headed, they were like dual headed. Uh, so these didn't work because the Phillips um, head wasn't wasn't the right size. So, but it's all done. So um, now we can see if we can get the top off. Right. Right, let's, let's just ease this off there. So, definitely, this is when I find there's another screw that I haven't got out. And it was imperative that I got it out and I don't know where it is. Right, okay, so that comes undone here. Ah, so this is where I have to prise these off. Yeah, I knew I'd forget something, so. Mm hmm I have no idea if this is the right way to get these off. Yeah, that, that, that probably about works. And now for this one, this is the, the lock switch, the security mechanism to stop you from mauling your fingers. How do it? Oh, okay. Is it, does this come off first? Uh, hmm, don't know. No, oh, well maybe it doesn't need to come off. Uh huh. Where is? Okay, that comes off there. That's fine. Is something else locking it? Have I missed another screw? I don't see how. Unless there's one. Un Unless there's one under there, which of course there is, because it would have to be because John Boy forgot about these hidden ones that are under. Right, let's let's just see if I can get this. I presume it to be the same screw here. Let me just have a quick look. Okay, let me just try and do this. Put this down here. Try and find the the bit where it. Okay, uh, let's try. What are these ones? Smaller one, maybe. Right. Well, I had a little rest, and I got back my patience, and I managed to get the. Uh, middle screw undone so now it's it's looking like that we can probably take it apart so uh, let's lift this up there's going to be certain wires that I will need to be careful of right okay so we've got um sorry about to see let's see if I can show you it Oh, okay. Oh my God, there's grease everywhere. Uh huh. Okay, that was a bad mistake because now there's a huge, bigger bit of whoa. Right, okay. Oh. And as soon as uh, as soon as I let me just stop from covering the camera. As soon as I open this up, you can uh, you can smell. Burning motor, but amazingly, though I can smell burning motor, I can't actually. I can't actually see any burning. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not. There's nothing obvious. I'm not seeing. I see. You know, I can see the the commutator and everything in the motor, but. I mean, it does smell. It 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 really does smell of of a motor burned out. But I can't see. I can't see any black or burn. 
Oh, and I'm going to take, I'm going to be very um, careful. I'm just going to switch the, the plug off. Right, so that is isolated. I'm just trying to see what we've got here. Right, it's just going to try this again. I'm going to um, switch the the power on, and I'm just going to see what sparks we get out of there. Oh wow! Did you see that? Let's just turn the light off. Right. This I'm pretty sure this is not what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Right, let's try this again. Be very careful because it's live and everything. Ah. Is that supposed to happen? I just wonder if it's the little bushes. Because... So I'm struggling to think of what to do. I think, I don't think it's anything to do with the lubrication, although I can always lubricate it a little bit more. I mean, it's, I'm not really struck, uh, struggling for lubrication. I've got lots of oils and stuff and greases, but I don't think this is the problem, really. I don't think this is the problem. I think it's all from the motor because the electric motor, that we are seeing here is um, is obviously showering everything with sparks and I'm sure that's not right I'm sure it's just worn down the bushes um, to the point where there is I mean there is a huge um, there's a huge carbon deposit on and let's just try and see let me just put the lights back on again I forgot to put the lights back on the last time yeah, I don't know whether you can see there, I hope you can, but there's a big carbon deposit on there, in there. Um, I'm just hoping that uh, that this is not the cause, because if it is the cause, I'm kind of not going to get a new replacement motor. I'll have to just get a new machine, in which case that would be a real disappointment, because um, my first quick fix, and I haven't been able to fix it. But I guess that's, that's, what you, uh, that's what you have to deal with. Hmm... Whoa, that is hot. Ow, that is burny hot. I'm sure that's not supposed to be like that. So let me just try this again. I'm just going to defeat the switch. Push this in again. And now I'm just going to hold this down and see how long it goes before the temperature thermal cutoff kicks in. Well, here's the thing. I'm pretty sure that when I was trying this out before, that the thermal cutoff would have kicked in by now. Oh. It has it? I think it has. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it has. So it's definitely a problem with the motor, and that's something that I'm not going to really be able to fix unless I buy a new motor. And I'm not entirely sure what the part number is because it's not written down anywhere. Uh, and I guess it's not meant to be replaced, which is such a shame. All right, so I've been away and I had a thought and I've had a look at everything that we've got in front of us and I've done some research and ultimately, the 
The problem is down, let's see if I can bring this, oops. Um, in here, you've got the commutator and um, you've got a bush here and a one in the bottom. And they are, they're supposed to be spring loaded against the commutator, um, but they wear away. And the problem is essentially is that either the commutator has worn away or the bush has worn away uh, more like the bush on the bottom, I think, because that's where the spring, the, that's where the sparks are coming from. And I've gone to see if I could get a replacement motor. And essentially, <laughs> and this is the, unfortunately, this is um, the, 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 the situation we are in in life and the way that products get made. Because it's not financially beneficial for me to buy a new one of these, a replacement one of these. Everything else is working fine. This is the problem. Actually, the bushes are the problem. Um, but you'd probably have to buy the whole motor. The motor, the best price that I could get for one of these motors is between 50 and 60 UK pounds, British pounds. And um, one of these shredders, I can get for about 45 pounds. So it's actually, um, it's actually not worth it. Uh, and that's a shame because I'd rather not have to junk all of this plastic for the sake of this motor. Because everything else seems to work just fine. All the, the gears are fine. Um, the shredding mechanism is all fine. Yeah, sadly, that's the state of the world. So in answer to the question, can I fix it? Well, I probably could. I probably could get another one of these. And I probably could get it all working again fine. But the question should be, I think, is it worth me doing it? And I don't think it is financially. Unfortunately, that is the way that products are made nowadays. No user serviceable parts and a big whole heap of plastic going to landfill. Sad times. So there we are. Quite a sad ending to the video, really, because I wasn't able to fix it. But I could have fixed it. Um, I'd, after the did the the closing caption there, I said that um, I could buy another motor, and but that would cost about the same as another shredder. And it would if I went onto a UK site that did refurbish motors for shredders. Um, but I could have gone on to Alibaba, and in fact I did go on to the Alibaba site, and I found the model number motor. Uh, lots of them there from China um, and the unit price was quite good it was about four dollars but the downside of course is that I had to buy thousands of them and I've really got no place or want to buy a thousand motors for shredders so yeah it <laughs> I could fix it it would work but it's uneconomic and that's very sad that's where we have to end this video because this is the sign of our times. We can't fix it because it's uneconomic. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, something to brighten the days. And uh, I'll be along with another one in a few days or weeks, knowing my timeline. <laughs> See you then.